Traveling from Nashville to Franklin, one of the first things you see is Harlansdale Farm, a world-renowned Tennessee walking horse farm founded in the early 1930s by Harlan Hayes. Harlan Hayes was known to be a good farmer and a good judge of livestock. So my grandfather drove up to Gamelia, Kentucky and told him about his dream to start this farm and persuaded him to come back to Franklin and he and his family, he, he was just 25 years old. He and his fam, his wife and his little girl, they moved into what's called the Hayes House, which was the old Lily farmer house that was built back turn of the century. It's beautiful. A farm of this size could not be run by just one family. In the beginning, it took many families to start the farm. Over time, between Leapers Fork and Franklin, they had 10 families that lived on the farm, made their living on the farm, and continued to do everything that needed to be done. But you got to remember, mechanization of farming was just sort of new in the 30s, and you know, when they got started. And so they still had some horse-drawn equipment or mule-drawn, and then they later bought some old tractors. Due to the number of horses, the farm had many barns. So the very first Harlandsdale barn was up behind the Hayes house, up on the hill there. Uh, we called it the lower barn, but it was built a replica of the barns that they were used to in Kentucky, Gamelia, Kentucky. In fact, it was a kit. One of the most famous Tennessee walking horses ever to come from those barns was Midnight Sun. Well, Midnight Sun was very gentle, very smart. Anybody could ride him. And so in 1945, they showed him at the celebration again and won it. But not only did they win that, they won the stallion class, they won the amateur class, they won the get a sire. They won so many different classes. Every night he was shown, he won a show, won, won a, a big major class, but won the championship. So he became the talk of everything. He kind of set the tone and they began a breeding program and people used, came from everywhere to breed to him. In 1946, he won everything again. And then in 1947, they had been, his breeding career kind of really hurt his training career, but he didn't, he didn't win, but they retired him after that. But in a 50 year span of the celebration, only four years was there ever a horse that won the celebration that wasn't traced back to Midnight Sun. Midnight Sun became so famous that people from all over the world came to see him. There was a time when celebrities, all kinds of people would come down to the farm. We had Marie Von Tropp, we've had Sunset Carson. I mean, we've had all kinds of people that would come just to have their pictures made with Midnight Sun. After his competition days, Midnight Sun became a child favorite, but towards the end of his life, he began to get frustrated with the attention. He had a trick too, uh, that uh, when kids, people would come to see Midnight Sun, and he was a generous thing. I remember going to his stall and walking all around him. He wouldn't bother you a bit. He was the sweetest, gentlest, kindest big stallion you ever saw. But Red and he had a thing worked out when he saw that Sun was kind of getting tired. He would kind of say something to him. He said, now don't you bite that boy. And he would, Sun would raise his head real high and chomp his, his chops together and, and slobber a little bit onto the child and the kid, they would go away. So, but they had their signals worked out <laughs> that they would do these sort of things. In the late 2010s, the walking horse industry began to slow down, but Harlandsdale had one more great horse. The last great horse we had was uh, Rowdy Rev, and he's now standing at MTSU which, and doing well. And we took him over there. We dispersed of the, of the horses at that time. And, but, and, but this horse here was, is, is buried down at Harlandsdale, and that's Jen's Major General. And he was a distant uh, offspring of the Midnight Sun lineage. When the horses left Harlandsdale in the 2000s, the next plan was to let the public enjoy the farm. A man named Clint Calicut, who's I think deceased now, who was a state senator. Some of the, the mayor at that time, right, uh, I think it was Anderson, who still is the county mayor now, came to them and also the Tennessee Land Trust and worked out a deal where we could sell the farm. It was, it was sold as an estate appraisal, which is less than you would if you're going to put houses on it, okay? And they um, put it in a land trust. 
and they said that it would only be a passive park and have some kind of horse activity forever. For, you know. After Harlandsdale became a park, the barns began to lose their luster, so city leaders came together to make a change. But David um, said, you know, we can't let this farm go down. So he started a group of people, uh, came out of Franklin first. Out of that came he and Dr. McInturf, Monty McInturf, who was our veterinarian. They wanted to preserve the old barn and keep it alive. And, and so they formed a group called Friends of Franklin Park. Friends of Franklin Parks holds an annual fundraising event to preserve the original buildings on the farm. And so from there, they began to raise funds called Raise the Roof every year, where they raise money to restore the old barn. One of the newer additions to the park is a polo arena. Then after that, they got a uh, tractor supply to put an arena behind the place, you know, behind the farm, big barn there on the other side of the interurban trolley line. And so we got an arena there. And, and so, and now they, they incorporated the city park system into that, and they have all kinds of events there now. I mean, they got the, the landing place for the kayaks to the walks around it, uh, to dog park. One of the oldest buildings on the farm is the Hayes House, which is in need of the most care. It, it, we now, I serve on that board to raise money for the Hayes House. That is a Victorian home that has more history than Harlandsdale Farm. It goes back to the turn of the century. And we're, gonna, we're raising money to restore that old house, which was Harlan Hayes' home. And then after that, it was my mother had an art studio in there. The biggest event the farm holds today is the internationally known Pilgrimage Festival. Uh, and then, of course, I got the Pilgrimage, you know, which has become nationwide known, nationally known. You know, bigger than that, I met some people from England that came to the Pilgrimage last year. Harlan's Dale Farm is open from dawn till dusk every day. Tucker Harlan, WBHS 9 News.